All right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to start the derivation of the Reynolds Transport Theorem. This derivation is located on page number 136 of Engineering Fluid Mechanics. Let's get started. Two fundamental ideas. A system and a control volume, or CV. This is a collection of matter identified by the engineer. So this is matter. And this is a volume in space that is defined by the engineer, typically shown with a dotted line around some object. The, Ren the Reynolds Transport Theorem is mathematics to move from a system to a control volume. The reason for this is that conservation laws were historically developed for systems. And there need needed to be a way, theoretically, to change these laws from the systems so that they apply for a control volume. So a conservation law is conservation of mass, conservation of momentum, conservation of energy. To do the derivation, let's start by sketching a control volume. So we're going to select a uh, sketch a rectangular volume here. And now let's define a system. So we're going to define some matter. And this matter we're going to define happens to be some of the matter is inside this volume and some of this matter is outside this volume. So our system is sketched here. And let's identify this as time t. So again, the dotted region right here is a volume and the shaded region here is a system. And this is what it looks like at time t. Now, now let's go to a later time. Our control volume will be exactly the same at this later time. But let's imagine the matter in the system is flowing. So some of the matter has passed across the control surface right here. So some of the matter in the system is now outside the control volume. And some of the matter is inside. So this is time t plus delta t. All right, so let's start with the idea of the time rate of change of some quantity B in the system. And B can be mass, it can be energy, it can be momentum. It's whatever we want to conserve. And so we're writing the first derivative of this. And this is defined is B at time T plus delta T and this is B in the system, minus B at time T, again in the system, delta T, and we take the limit as delta T goes to zero. All right, let's do a term-by-term -term analysis. B in the system at time T plus delta T is equal to the amount of B that's in the control volume at time T plus delta T plus a little chunk of B that was transported across the control surface. So this is delta B out. B in the system at the initial time, time T, is comprised of one part that's in the control volume plus an amount that's about to enter the system. Okay, next step. We're going to take this term and this term and substitute them in. So this is going to come in up here, and this is going to come in right there. Let's go ahead and do that work. We're going to have B in the control volume at time T plus delta T plus delta B out minus B in the control volume at time T plus delta B in by delta T. And we still have the limit here as delta T goes to zero. Next, let's rearrange terms. So this becomes limit delta T goes to zero. The amount of B in the control volume at time T plus delta T minus B in the control volume 
the time t divided by delta t plus delta b out over delta t minus delta b in over delta t. And this is all in the limit as delta t goes to zero. Now if we look at those terms, the first term is simply the time rate of change of b that's in the control volume. Um, delta b out over delta t, limit as delta t goes to zero, is the rate at which b is passing across the control surface. And this term becomes the rate at which b is entering the control surface. So let's complete it. And that's the basic result. And what it says is when we have um, the time uh, derivative from a, in a system point of view, um, that's equal to the accumulation of, of B in the control volume plus the outflow minus inflow. Remember that pattern. Accumulation, accumulation plus outflow minus inflow. B in system, BT. That's it.